You know, we're looking for a better life there in New York, the United States, you know. We are going forward. This is very hard, but there's no life over Let's go now to Alexandra Rive for more analysis. She's an immigration attorney at Moro Osorio PLLC and a professor of law at Georgetown Law School. Alexandra, so often even the phrase crisis at the border is used as a sort of political weapon by Republicans against this current administration, even though we know that migrant flows are cyclical, they're often based on things well outside the U.S. borders. However, it does seem that the Biden administration has struggled to get these crises under control. Correct. I mean, I, I think that currently, whenever there's tragedies that happen in foreign countries, oftentimes you can see uh, new uh, demographics of people entering the United States. So I think it probably is accurate to say that there has been an influx of Haitian migrants who are trying to enter the United States. Um, we recently declared um, a new program of TPS, Temporary Protected Status, for Haitian individuals. A lot of these individuals are coming to, to hopefully seek asylum in the United States. Um, there was an earthquake, an assassination of their president. So it's no surprise that we do have more migrants from Haiti in particular coming to the southern border than we have in, in previous times. And I was just going to ask you about TPS, temporary protected status. So that gives people who are facing these crises in their own countries a little time before they you know, need to go through the judiciary system and figure out whether they can stay in the United States. It gives them a little breathing room. But can it also be said that it is something of an incentive for people from Haiti to make those perilous, often life-threatening journeys? Well, TPS would actually not help anyone who's trying to travel to come into the United States currently. Um, so for any program of temporary protected status, there's a date by which you have to have been in the United States. And when TPS is announced, that date is prior to the announcement of TPS. So in this case, um, there was a TPS designation in 2011, and now there's a new current TPS designation, but you had to have been in the United States since July 29, 2021. So it's not as if the Biden administration could declare TPS, temporary protected status, as you say, some breathing room, and then immigrants could come into the United States and apply for TPS because they would not qualify after the announcement of the designation. True, but it's often said that when people in Haiti see the current stance of the government in offering these humanitarian aids like TPS, that could be an added incentive to say, OK, well, if I cross that border, however I get there, I could get a little more help down the road. Now, when you look at migrants coming from other countries, the U.S. has tried some unique means to try to stanch those flows. But in the case of Haiti, it's not as if the Biden administration can work with the Haitian government, which is currently in the form of absolute meltdown. Correct. I mean, there's I, I don't envy the Biden administration on um, on a lot of these issues. I mean, they're complicated humanitarian issues. It, you know, there is, uh, we're in a time where we have, the, there has to be some screening mechanism for individuals. Um, we're also in the middle of a pandemic. And at the same time, you do have, as your um, cameras are showing, these people who are literally under a bridge so that they can have some shelter from the extreme heat that people are facing at the southern border. So yes, I don't know that there is an easy solution, especially as you said, there is this political unrest and there's really no way um, for us to adequately work with the, with the Haitian government at this moment, in my opinion. Yeah, and you just see the conditions those people face. It is stunning. All right, Alexandra, thanks for joining us on this.